Okay, so next we'll prove a very useful corollary of the previous theorem. Every finite point set in a T1 space is closed. So proof. Let X be a T1 space and let the set F, which is the set containing the points X of 1 through X of N, be a finite point set in the space X. And the set F is the finite union of singleton sets where each singleton set is closed for every index I in the set from 1 to N. So this set is a finite union of closed sets. And hence the set F is closed. All right, new definition. A topological space X for which there exist disjoint open neighborhoods of both points in each pair of distinct points is called a T2 or Hausdorff space that is for every distinct pair of points, x of 1 not equal to x of 2 in the space, there exists open neighborhoods use of 1 of the point x of 1 and use of 2 of the point x of 2 such that the intersection of these neighborhoods is empty Now I need to point out that some definitions of a T2 or house door space allow for any neighborhoods that is the neighborhoods need not be open now notice that a T1 space is not necessarily Hausdorff, since it is not required that the neighborhoods be disjoint,
However, every house dwarf space is T1. And the contrapositive is also true. That is, if a space is not T1, then the space is not Hausdorff. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let X be a countable set. And let tau sub D be the power set of X. Once again, the uh, discrete topology on the set of X. Then every singleton set is both open and closed and so for every distinct pair of points x not equal to y in the space x the singleton uh, containing the point x is an open neighborhood of the point X and the singleton containing the point Y is an open neighborhood of the point Y such that the intersection of these neighborhoods is empty and hence the space X is Hausdorff. Okay, so let's try to gain an intuitive understanding of these uh, spaces. So let X together with some topology tau be a topological space. and let the points x sub 1 and x sub 2 be two distinct points in the space. Suppose that u sub 1 is an open neighborhood of the point x sub 1, and that u sub 2 is an open neighborhood of the point x sub 2. So suppose that the boundary of u sub 2 looks something like this and that the boundary of u sub 1 looks something like that. In a Hausdorff space or T2 space, each uh, distinct pair of points can be separated by disjoint neighborhoods. Now today we see this as a separation condition that may or may not be satisfied by a given space. But one of the earliest definitions of a topological space, given by none other than Felix Hausdorff, uh, included what we now call the Hausdorff condition. Uh, and again, today we consider this a uh, condition that may or, not, may or may not be satisfied by a given space, and a space that satisfies this separation condition is a Hausdorff space. 
uh, and in a house door space, uh, again, the neighborhoods need not necessarily be open, but it is a very natural thing uh, to take open sets as uh, they are the sets in the topology. So uh, in this series, uh, most often we will uh, take the uh, neighborhoods to be open neighborhoods unless it suits our purposes to uh, allow for any arbitrary neighborhood. Now in a Frechet or T1 space, each distinct pair of points can be separated by uh, two neighborhoods that are not necessarily disjoint. Now in the case of uh, the Frechet and the Komolgorov spaces, we do require that the neighborhoods be open because we can allow for this situation where uh, given the uh, neighborhood of the point x of 2, it's possible that the point x of 1 is on the boundary of the uh, neighborhood that contains the point x of 2. However, the two uh, points are separated by uh, open neighborhoods, again, not necessarily disjoint. Now in a uh, Komolgorov or T0 space, at least one of the points in any distinct pair can be separated from the other uh, by means of an open neighborhood. And again, uh, we do require that the neighborhoods be open because we allow for the possibility that one point occurs on the boundary of the uh, open neighborhood of the other. Now, uh, as I stated, uh, today we consider these separation conditions that may or may not be satisfied by a given space. But in the early days of topology, these were taken as axioms the T in T1, T0, and T2 is from the German word Trinungs axiom, which means separation axiom. Now, the trend in modern literature is to move away from using the terminology T0, T1, T2, and so forth, uh, so that we are not uh, using a term that uh, refers to an axiom. And also, uh, it's more descriptive to use uh, the terms that use the name of mathematicians. Now, as we will see, the separation condition satisfied by a given topological space is also a topological invariant Now, I would encourage you to begin to make tables for uh, spaces, uh, keeping track of the invariants. For instance, uh, we have the number of isolated points.
and we have uh, connectedness. And now separation condition. And so for instance, for the excluded point topology, the number of isolated points is equal to the cardinality of the set minus one, because in the uh, excluded point topology, there is one cluster point, and all other points are isolated points. The exclude, uh, a space with the excluded point topology is connected, and the separation condition satisfied by a space with the uh, excluded point topology is the T0 or Kolmogorov uh, uh, condition. Now as an exercise, determine the subsets A of X for which the closure of A is equal to the set X in or the SpaceX in the in discrete topology the particular point topology the excluded point topology and the discrete topology. Okay, so we'll end here for today. Next time we will look at the concept of uh, density of subsets in a given topological space. So I hope you have enjoyed the fifth lecture. Thanks for watching.